Okay guys, we are going to continue our next video with electronegativity and polarity of a molecule. Now so far, all of our chemical bonding that we learn are very um, are, are either being an ionic compounds or being a covalent compound. Okay. However, in most of the real compound, uh, the type of bondings lies in between somewhere between ionic and covalent. Thus, the, uh, the great majority of bonds are more accurately uh, thought as a polar covalent, that is, a partial ionic and partial covalence. So this is what it means, uh, by, hence we say that uh, this molecule which has a partial uh, ionic and partial covalence is what we call as a polar covalent compound. So what is a polar covalent compound actually indicates? Let's have a look next. One of the most important concepts in chemical bonding is the electronegativity, the relative ability of the bonded atoms to attract the electron pair share. So, electronegativity is a relative concept, meaning that an element's electronegativity can be measured only in the relative of electronegativity of other elements. Understanding device method of calculating relative ne electronegativity of most elements. So, in here, uh, this is the periodic tables. We have to understand that when going across period, electronegativity increase and when going down to the group electronegativity decrease so let's have a, let's start off first by using a simple molecule where we're going to compare about the polarity in a fluorine molecule and also hydrogen fluoride so let's start off with a fluorine molecule so fluorine molecule so this is the Lewis structure of fluorine molecule so, we describe fluorine molecule as a non-polar molecule. Why? Because there is no differences of electronegativity between the fluorine atoms, where 4.0 minus 4.0, you have 0. So, since there are no differences in electronegativity, therefore, the bonding pair of electron was not pulled to either atoms, hence remaining in the middle between two fluorine atoms. And since there are no difference of electronegativity, we have described that the dipole moment is to be equal to zero, and therefore no resultant dipole moment nor vector. Hence, we say that fluorine is a non-polar molecule. Compared to hydrogen fluoride, hydrogen fluoride, hydrogen has the electronegativity of 2.1, while fluorine has the electronegativity of 4.0. So due to the difference of electronegativity exhibited in hydrogen fluoride, we say that hydrogen fluoride is a polar molecule. So now, since fluorine is more electronegative than hydrogen, therefore the bonding pair electron will pull closer to the fluorine atoms. Now, this is called this is due to fluorine has a greater electron than uh, this is due to F is more electronegative than the H. As a result, fluorine has a greater electron density compared to H. Therefore, when it bears a greater electron density, it is as if like it wants to accept electron. So when it is almost like it wants to accept electron, therefore fluorine bear a partial negative charge. Whereas hydrogen, as if it wants to donate the electron to the fluorine, therefore hydrogen bear a partial positive charge. So since fluorine is more electronegative than hydrogen, the presence of the dipole moment in HF presence and the vector of the resultant forces is pointed to the direction of the fluorine. So this is where the resultant forces can be represented by using an arrow and a sign here. So uh, since fluorine is more negative, so the vectors of the resultant dipole goes to the direction of fluorine, which is a more electronegative molecule. So this is the fundamental understanding of uh, between a polar and non-polar molecule. So what about if it is a polyatomic molecule? So if it is a polyatomic molecule, uh, we will have a look at the comparison later. So comparison above are basically the differences between an element with compound, where the atomic molecule atoms of different elements, for example, HCl, CO, and NO, has dipole moment and are called as polar molecule. While that atomic molecule contain the atom of the same element, for example, hydrogen, oxygen, fluorines, are examples of non-polar molecule because they do not have dipole moment. However, not necessarily a covalent compound is guaranteed a, a polar molecule. So, for example, in the case of sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide. Now given to you, this is the Lewis structure of sulfur trioxide and this is the Lewis structure of sulfur dioxide. So from the uh, polarity of the bonding, you can see that uh, oxygen is more electronegative than sulfur. So the resultant dipole between the sulfur oxygens is pointed towards the direction of oxygen. However, sulfur trioxide is to claim a non-polar molecule. Why? This is due to the bond moment is a vector quantity, which means that it can have both magnitude and direction. So the measure of the dipole moment is equal to the vector sum of the dipole moment, and since each of them, which are formed by SO bond, 
we have the same moment in terms of magnitude so however they are point in opposite direction so when they are pointed in the opposite direction in the planar SO3 molecule so you see this one all pull at the opposite side so it is to say that their dipole bond in here cancel off each other so the summation of the resultant dipole moment will be equal to zero therefore SO3 is a non-polar molecule However, for sulfur dioxide SO2, the dipole moment of the entire molecule is made of SO2. So even though uh, the two bond moments in SO2 are equal in magnitude, however, the presence of the lone pair electrons in here causes the uh, causes a band shape. So the band shape will make the polarity uh, will make the magnitude to go slightly down compared to a normal SO3. So as a result, there is an overall vector points which points towards downwards, and this will and the sum of the resultant typo would not be zero. Therefore, for since you have an overall magnitude where you have a overall vector point downward, so we say that this molecule is a polar molecule. So for example of SO2 and SO3, we can tell that if a polyatomic molecule is a symmetrical molecule, so what is a symmetrical? So a molecule with no lone pair electron in it, it may be a non-polar molecule. However, if a polyatomic molecule is asymmetrical molecule, uh, most of the time we are referring to molecule with lone pair electron, it may be a polar molecule. So even though a polyatomic molecule may be symmetrical, if the surrounding atoms are not the same, molecule may be a polar molecule, as the bonding moments are different and cause the magnitude of the dipole moment of molecule is not equal to zero. However, if the surrounding atoms are the same, bonding moments are equal in magnitude and the resultant factor cancel off each other, causing the overall di dipole moment to be equal to zero, hence a non-polar molecule. So below and illustrated what am I trying to describe in here. So let's have a look at methane molecule CH4 and chloromethane CH3Cl. So uh, in methane and chloromethane, we can see that there is one chlorine molecule replacing the hydrogen. So it is to say that methane molecule is a non-polar molecule because the bonding moment if each CS, CH in here is the same and the vector causes the resultant force dipole to cancel off each other hence cause the dipole moment to be equal to zero therefore a non-polar non molecule however in chloromethane a foreign species of Cl which is more electronegative compared to other atoms in the molecule so the vector and magnitude is heading to the right this will cause the overall uh, resultant forces going to the direction of the more electronegative element which is Cl in here so due to the presence of the overall vectors of uh, caused by these CCL bonds, so therefore we claim that chloromethane is a polar molecule. So this is generally how we tell the molecule to be polar and non-polar. So I also summarize in the form of table in order to help you to understand. So if a diatomic molecule of the same elements which has no electronegativity, it is guaranteed a non-polar molecule. And if it is made of different molecules, it is guaranteed a polar molecule. For polyatomic molecule, if it is asymmetrical, which means it contains lone pair electron that will influence the repulsions between lone pair and lone pair electron, most of the time this molecule is to claim a molar molecule. However, if a molecule is symmetrical molecule, that means contain no lone pair electrons and same surrounding atoms, so same surround atoms will make the molecule to become non-polar, and however, if you have different elements of the surrounding atom, it becomes a polar molecule. So, even without the structure, we can, in laboratory, tell whether a molecule is polar or non-polar. So this is a simple experiment that can be used to determine whether a molecule is polar or non-polar. So by using a liquid form of a covalent, it flows out slowly from the burette while a negative charge rod is bring closer to the flow. So, if the flow of the liquid is deflected to the direction of the negative charge, so we say that this molecule is a, this liquid is a polar liquid. However, if the flow remains undeflected, this liquid is a non-polar liquid. So that is all for the polarity of the bondings. Next, we're going to have a look at electronegativity and the type of chemical bond. So the type of bond that will form can be told by using the difference of electronegativity. Larger the differences, the more the tendency of the electron from a low electronegativity move to the atoms with high electronegativity and form ionic compound. So the relationship between ionic character and the differences in electronegativity of one atom is shown in the diagram in the graph below. So 
we say that if the difference of electronegativity is greater than 1.7, it is mostly ionic. And if it is lower than 1.7, it is mostly a, a covalent compound. So this is a graph of the difference of electronegativity of a fuel compound and the arbitrary line that differences between ionic and covalent uh, compounds. So in here, hydrogen fluoride is to claim as covalent compound, while lithium iodide, iodide is to claim an ionic compound. So from the graph above, the dotted line represents the arbitrary line between the ionic and covalent compound of the molecule. To be more specific, they are more likely an ionic compound that may have a high covalent characteristic, for example, uh, LII, or conversely, a covalent compound having high ionic characteristic, as an example, HF. The covalent characteristic of a molecule depends on the ability of cation to polarize an anion. So polarization indicates the ability of the cation to attract the electron density of an anion when, the, when put next to the cation involved. So the diagram below shows what it tries to say in here. So let's say if you have a large cation, it's placing next to a smaller, cation, a smaller anion. So due to the large anion, it is not able to distort the electron cloud of the anion involved. However, if we have a small cation, which is placed in a large anion, so due to the small anion, the cation, the small cation are able to polarize the electron cloud of the anion. So when this happens, okay, the electron density, uh, the electron density of the anion is drawn closer to the uh, cation, as if that it wants to form a covalent bond with the a B plus involved. So as a result. This will cause the covalent characteristic of a BY to be increased. So the covalent properties of a covalent molecule is dependent on the cation and anion where they can be explained via polarization power of the cation and polarizability of the anions. So let's start from the polarization power of the cation. So polarization power of cation measures the ability of the cation to polarize the electron cloud of the anions. So it depends on two factors the factor of the charge and also the factors of the uh, size. So it says that greater the charge of the ion, higher the effective nuclear charge. So uh, hence it will be able to attract the neighboring electron. So this will cause the polarization power of the cation increase and increase the covalent characteristic of the anion, a cation. In terms of size, smaller the cation, closer the neighboring atom, so easier for the cation to polarize the anion as a result, increase the covalent characteristic of the cation. So both factors can be then explained in a new terms called as charge density, where charge density is equal to charge over ionic radius. From the equation above, charge density will have a greater value provided that the cation has a high charge and small cationic radius. So greater the charge density, higher the polarizing power, greater the covalent character inside this cation. Now, for a, uh, to show a covalent characteristic of a compound, having a large cation, uh, having a high polarized uh, tension power is not enough. You must have more anion with a high polarizability. So, polarizability of the anion measures the ability of the anion to allow the electron density to be polarized by the cation. So, in terms of the polarizability of the anion, the two factors that will influence it in number one, in terms of charge. We said that greater the charge, lower the effective nuclear charge of the anion and weaken the electrostatic attraction forces. So therefore, the electron cloud of the anion is easily to be distorted, hence increase the polarizability of the anion. So therefore, covalent characteristic of the anion increase. In terms of size, larger the size of the anion will cause the electron, uh, the, we call the outermost electron to be further away from the nucleus. So easier for the cation to polarize the anion has increased the polarizability of the anion and covalent characteristic of the increase. So unlike cation, anion do not have the term combined factor as of charge and ionic radius. However, information of the polarizability of the anion enables the prediction of the covalent character of the molecule. Since in order to form a covalent bond, it depends on both polarization power and polarizability of the anion. Okay, so uh, with this, uh, that is all for my second video for the part B of chemical bonding. I see you in the next video. Thank you. Thank you.